I'm Alistair Greener and this is The Swindon Show. Hello and welcome to The Swindon Show, this week coming from the Swindon Museum and Art Gallery in Old Town. Gemma's away on holiday this week and I'm by myself and we've got a lot to get through, so let's find out what's on the show. We get all sporty with STEAM Museum's new track and field exhibition. We bring you the latest events in our What's On guide. We learn more about this year's Swindon and Wiltshire Pride event. My favourite part of the show, it's the Eating Out guide. We speak to the brave soldiers from A Squadron Royal Yeomanry about the Queen's Diamond Jubilee medals. Ten times gold medalist Linford Christie takes time out from a local event to talk to us about his vision to help young people become more ambitious. We give you the chance to win in our competitions. And to end the show, we chat to Swindon folk rock band The Battlers and hear them perform. This remarkable art collection has the reputation as being one of the best collections of 20th century British art outside London. The museum houses historical displays, including archaeology and geology. It looks through Swindon's Jurassic past, its links with the Romans and more modern history. I'm here to talk to Zoe Dennington, who is the outreach officer at the museum. So, Zoe, this will be one of those hidden treasures, I presume, for many people of Swindon. They don't even realise it's here. It is. We have a really wonderful collection of 20th century British art here that lots of people don't realise we have. Um, and the great thing is that we're absolutely free for visitors to come and look around. So, really, the summer holidays is the perfect time to be doing that. Can we just repeat that? Free, everybody. <laughs> free. <laughs> so, of course, yes, if you've got the kids on holiday at the moment and you're looking for something to do, what a great place to come and yeah. learn about your local environment. Yes, we have a um, big collection of... Um, well, we have big heritage collections to do with Swindon as well. Um, and we've got our really Roman Family Fun Day coming up um, to celebrate the Festival of British Archaeology. So that's a chance for us to get some of our Roman archaeology um, out of the stores and get people to come and explore that er aspect of Swindon's heritage as well. Now, you're very much focused towards family days and you were showing me beforehand this rather fun pack yeah. that you've got available. Yeah, we've got this new activity which will be available for people over the summer holidays. Um, it's a museum explorer backpack. Right. Um, so this is a chance to help families really engage with our collections here. Um, it's full of really exciting things to do, things to make, um, some dressing up um, and a few museum objects to handle as well. So that's just a really nice way of people to So it's a great concept just, for, you know, just to hire it and then utilise all the activities. And yeah. I know you're very keen on getting people's feedback as well on the yes. future of the museum and art gallery. Absolutely we are. We've got um, an exhibition at the moment called What's in Store. Um, which has been a chance for us to get some things out of our stores that people might not have seen before. Um, so that's available for people to come and look at and that's a really good opportunity for people to come and tell us what they'd like to see more of and what sort of things they're really interested in. So we're collecting all of that feedback at the moment. And I'm going to put you really on the spot now, but if there was one thing you said to people, do not miss, what would it be at here? It has to be our art collection, really. Like We have a really, really outstanding collection of art here, which is really competes on a national playing field, and lots of people don't realise what a hidden gem it is. So I think really just pop in and come and see what we've got. Well, it's something definitely for Swindon to be proud of. So thank you very much indeed. Right. That's fantastic. And talking about being proud, of course, we're going to be very, very proud within the next week when the biggest show on earth starts. Of course, it's the biggest sporting event of the decade, if not more. And for certainly most of us, we're never going to see anything of its likes ever again. Well, I went down to Steam earlier on in the week to find out more about the Swindon Sporting Connections. 2012 is going to be a very, very busy year and of course the biggest show on earth is about to start in a few days' time. So it's great to be back at Steam and look at the connections between sport and the Great Western Railway. And it's a great pleasure to see Elaine Arthurs again. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Good to see you. So uh, show me around. Of course. So it's, a, it's about a lot of different sports, isn't it? It's not just track and field and so on. It is, definitely. I mean, the Great Western Railway had many sports clubs, cricket, football and rugby. And this is the Great Western Rugby Club um, that were in the London division. And they're still going now. They were formed in 1919 and still going strong today. 
It is amazing, isn't it, how something like that, the history, just stays with the club despite everything else that changes. Yeah, definitely. And I think they're really proud of their name. Although none of them actually work for the railway anymore, they're still carrying on that legacy that the Great Western Railway created. And you, you mentioned there, of course, the different teams involved from Great Western Railways. Yes. Well, of course, Great Western Railways would have been used as a method of transport to get to uh, various uh, activities and big sporting events. Definitely. They, they used to put on special trains trains to certain sporting venues, um, in particular the Henley Regatta, which was so technical they had policemen, security guards, porters all involved in this big event and getting people there on time. Ah, so maybe some of you should maybe be taking note of that. Yes. But as you're talking about the big event that's happening next week, um, there's been many employees of Great Western who actually went on to become incredibly proud sportsmen yes. representing the yeah, Great definitely. Western Railway. Yeah, definitely. Well, after a bit of research, we discovered that this gentleman here, he worked at Birmingham Snow Hill Station. Um, he was actually a renowned athlete. Um, and after a bit of delving and research, we found that he won a silver medal in the 1920 Antwerp Olympic Games. Fantastic. And of course, there were many people, weren't there, who uh, actually went on to represent Great Western Railway in the Olympics. Yeah, definitely. Times. Yeah. I mean, Charles is the most famous that we've discovered, but I'm sure there were many more. And, and again, there was, must have been a tremendous amount of pride for the people you know, amongst their colleagues that here they were, regular people working on the railways yeah. and all of a sudden representing their country and, of course, their employees. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Great Western Railway reported all the sporting activities every month. Um, there were always medals and trophies, which we've got on display today. So it was a real kind of pride and everything was reported on so everybody knew how successful you were. So tell me a little bit about this chap. Well, Charles, we don't know an awful lot about what he did as a job. We know he worked at Birmingham Snow Hill Station um, and he was quite prolific in company sports events. Um, and then in 1920, he um, was running for the Birchfield Harriers, which is quite a famous athletic um, sporting group today. Um, and he went on and won a silver medal in the um, running competition. Fantastic. Well, I mean, what a great celebration. You can see him here looking uh, pleased as yes. punch. <laughs> I mean, talk about things changing. Here we've got Violet Deer, who uh, was a fencer, and not only did she represent her town, her railway, and so on, but she actually made her own outfit as well. She did, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Violet actually worked on the Royal Trains for the Great Western Railway, um, working on the fabric work, so that was probably in the carriages, um, and so she probably had the skills to be able to make her own uniform as well. Boy, things have changed. <laughs> So this is a great exhibition that you've got here. How long is it going to be running for? Well, it's on for the duration of the Olympic Games, but also runs until the end of the year. And I love the way that you're actually involving the kids. You've got an interactive area here for the kids We too. have. We've just added a little <laughs> bit of fun for them to take part in some activities. Um, and we've also got kids for a quid this summer holiday, so it's a really good way to get the kids down here for a cheap price. Perfect. And th one of the great things we covered last time is that you're always changing things. There's always yes. new things. You've still got the Diamond Jubilee exhibition here. We do, yes. As well as everything else. Indeed. I mean, the Diamond Jubilee exhibition is still on with our trails, um, the summer holiday activities, and we've got our railway festival at the end of September. So if you're looking for a great day out, if you haven't been here for a while or you've never been here, make sure you come along and support one of Swindon's great amenities. Elaine, thank you very much indeed. You're and, welcome. Uh, can we carry on having a look around? Of course. Perfect. Let's go off this way, shall we? Get ready to stand and deliver on Thursday with 80s star Adam Ant at the Wyvern Theatre. He'll be performing classic songs including Ant Rap, Kings of the Wild Frontier, Friend or Foe and Prince Charming, as well as new material in his amazingly colourful and theatrical live gig. Also on Thursday you can enjoy the varied sounds of Pig Nose at the Vic. From Primal Swamp Boogie to Gothic Roots Rock, via a heady dose of hillbilly, country blues and work songs, there's a genre for every taste at this gig. If you want to do your bit for charity on Friday, then head down to Riff's Bar. They're hosting a gig by ARC and David Douglas & Co, which is all in aid of breast cancer care, so you can enjoy some top live music knowing you're supporting a great charity. On Saturday and Sunday, Cotswold Wildlife Park will be letting you get up close and personal with some spectacular birds of prey. From vultures to owls, falcons to eagles, 
you'll be able to enjoy these fearsome predators as they swoop and soar over the park. For a relaxing Sunday morning, Swindon Travel Choices have organised one of their regular social bike rides starting at Coat Water. This is an easy seven mile ride around the southeast circle in an anti-clockwise direction, following mainly cycle paths. At the time of recording, tickets were available for all these events. However, we do recommend you contact the venues before attending. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know who Vase Hunter or Baby D are, but I'm joined by two ladies who do know who they are because they're going to be at the Swindon and Wiltshire Pride event. Uh, jo and Fiona, welcome. Lovely Thank to you. see you both here. And uh, this, is, again, is another big event on the Swindon calendar, yep. August the 4th. That's right. Tell us a little bit about it because I understand it's in its fifth year. Yep. Um, well, the event itself um, will have three stages. We've got our main stage, which is nation, sponsored by ma Nationwide. Um, our unison stage is our community stage. And this year we're introducing the variety stage, um, which, as the title says, has a variety of acts on there. <laughs> so, yeah, it should be very entertaining. And the main thing that we were talking beforehand that you really want people to realise is this, this is for everybody. It's a celebration for everyone to just come along and have a lot of fun at. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's um, for those people that identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and everybody else to come along, because it's a real family-friendly event, and it's free and open to everybody. And I suppose it's a great opportunity, again, for people to actually meet and maybe break down some of those barriers that might exist as well. Definitely. I mean, the event is, like Fiona said, is a very fun and friendly event. And the whole point of the event is that, you know, the whole community to, can integrate together and, and celebrate the diversity within that community. So, you know, we're all different and we should all accept that, really. Now, it's been growing year by year, as I said before, in, it, in its fifth year. What, is there anything that's going to be a little bit different this year to previous years? It's our fifth birthday this year, so um, we're kind of going around the birthday theme a little bit right. during our parade. Um, our parade's going to be bigger this year than last year, um, and this year we've got um, a, a, better, a bigger headliner than previous years. Um, and we've got our new stage, like I said, the variety stage, which is new for this year. So basically, a lot of fun. It's yep. the whole day. Uh, come along, bring the kids, you know, and, and get involved in all the various activities. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And dress up. Yes. Why not? <laughs> Why not for the better? Well, that's what people always associate with these events, don't they? So these yeah. are fantastic costumes and you know just a, a, a massive sort of carnival party. That's uh, right. Yeah. Effectively. Well, brilliant. It's on August the fourth. Yeah. All days. You said there's a three main parts. So come to any part you want. It's free to come along to as well. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is perfect. Everyone likes that, don't they? Yes. And there's going to be food as well. Yes. Definitely. Can't beat that. Fantastic. Thank you so much indeed. Okay. Lovely Thank to you. talk to you both, Joe and Fiona. Thank you. And talking of food, yes, it's time for the eating out guide. Rumour has it that the sunshine we've all been waiting for is heading our way this week. So here are a few places you can enjoy a bite to eat outside in Swindon. Stanton House Hotel has a terrace overlooking the rolling Wiltshire countryside, which is the perfect place to enjoy their traditional menu, which has got an interesting Japanese twist. Sally Pussy's, just outside Wooten Bassett, has a lovely pub garden with plenty of shade. Great if you enjoy the sunshine, but don't like getting burnt. And their bar menu is the largest we've ever seen. If you fancy a quiet meal next to the Thames, then the Trout Inn at Lechlade is for you. They hold barbecues on Sunday afternoons when they've got live musical acts performing, so you can enjoy a burger and some great tunes at the same time. Perfect. Don't forget you can check out all the best places to eat around Swindon in our comprehensive guide. Just visit swindonweb.com. This is one of the latest exhibits here at the museum, which features documents and models from the Second World War. Now, last week, 18 soldiers from the A Squadron Royal Yeomanry were awarded their Queen's Diamond Jubilee medals. Now, these medals are given to members of the armed services for their work for the Crown. Now, it's awarded to anyone who's actually served more than five years in the reserves or the regular. Now, we were actually invited as the Swindon Show down to find out a little bit more and to see the presentation. Oh, 
Uh, two of the individuals who've received their medals today. First of all, Sergeant Major Dave Blackwell, uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, how does it feel to you to receive this medal? Um, yeah, it's very nice. We didn't actually think we were going to get anything because of uh, all the cutbacks and everything else that was going on. So, yeah, very good. Much appreciated. And for you personally, how long have you been in the service? Um, 27 years I've done. Wow. Mm. So that's quite, quite some time. Yeah. And obviously it's always nice to be recognised for your work. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And where that has that service taken taken you in that um, time? Around most of Europe, Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, etc., uh, America, Cyprus, and more importantly, Iraq, and hopefully Afghan by the end of this year. And have you had a good look at the medal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's going to have its pride of place. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Fantastic, yeah. and obviously something to pass down in yeah, years to come. Yeah. We are very aware of the expansion of the Territorial Army at yeah. the moment, and you guys are the new face of the uh, Territorial Army now. Yeah. Um, what made you get involved? Uh, well, I was at college and I thought, you know, I don't do much on, on, during the evenings and the weekends, so I thought I'd join the TA. So. And how's your first couple of months been? Oh, I've loved it, yeah, so just going through the weekend now, training, so just loving it, you know, getting better and better. And I saw you there watching uh, the, all of the other gentlemen receiving their awards and their medals. How did that make you feel? Uh, well, proud of, proud of the unit as well, so, and also proud of the people serving in the unit. It makes you want to get a medal myself, really. <laughs> Well, one day, if you, yeah. if you hang around as long as these guys may be. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, for people who may be watching this thinking, oh, shall I, shall I, shall I not join the Territorial Army, what would you say? Join. Join. Yeah. Definitely join. I've loved every single bit of it. Absolutely. So, Brigadier, for you, coming back to Swindon has been a, a bit of a special occasion as well. Yeah, coming home, really. I mean, uh, I've, I've not been back for seven years, and so to see... So many of the guys that I used to serve with as, when I was their squadron leader, great, great to see them. And for you, what was it like handing out those Diamond Jubilee medals? Well, I've done a really terrific job. You know, I mean, it takes a huge commitment to, to do what they're doing in the reserves. They've stuck the course, they're contributing to the unit, and they're contributing to their community. And I think they need to be rewarded, and they're duly so. So I was, I was delighted to be able to do it. And it's my only medal presentation so uh, this year, so it was to, to the home team, it's great. <laughs> well, we were talking to uh, two of the uh, uh, fairly new recruits. Uh, they've been in the service, I believe, now for just two months, mm. and they're very excited. And, of course, I presume you want to encourage a lot more youngsters to get involved. Absolutely. It's a young man's young man and young woman's game now. Yeah. And... Uh, and with all the kit that they're getting, they're getting an Arwimic, which is now seen in Afghanistan. They're going to get the latest equipment here. You know, they've got everything to play for. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it's a great little community. It's, it's about uh, enjoyment, challenge, fun, doing something different and contributing to society at the same time. So seeing the Moonraker up there, uh, obviously rather rather nice touch, but of course the re reason you're here is to celebrate the award of these medals this evening. That's right, yeah, the Queen for Her Majesty's 60th. But I mean, what is fantastic is how many people are so proud to come here tonight, part of the reservists, and get their medal. And we're lucky enough to have a brigadier to tell us the update on 2020, which is the great new recycling of the army, and options one, two, three, and now we're in the next, the next one. But you know, it's very exciting, and as you showed, there's the Moonraker, this is the Wiltshire Yeomanry, <laughs> your local squadron here in Swindon, and we've been going since 1795. Well, it's a young man's game, I can assure you, you know, they're much fitter than they ever were in my day, and um, you know, they are part of the One Army concept now, and they are, as you hear, Herrig 18, there are, there are I think, 36 soldiers going out on that, and a few Arkles in there as well, I think. Fantastic. Captain Arkles. <laughs> <laughs> How about these? These are ice skates from the early 20th century. I'm not sure how our Olympic team this year would get on with them. Now, talking of Olympics, with 24 major championships and 10 gold medals to his name, Linford Christie is the most decorated athlete of his generation. And he was in Swindon last week with one of his latest projects, Street Athletics. So I raced down to find out more. Well, ambled really. Well, first of all, Linford, welcome back to Swindon. Thank you very much. It's great to see you. Uh, hopefully the weather's a little bit better than it was last time. Oh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> at least it's not, it's not raining. Last time it was, you know, torrential rain, but the kids still turned out. So we're hoping it's going to be a bit dry. So 
you know, well, you're, you're the inspiration behind Street Athletics. Tell us a little bit more about what you aim to achieve from today's event. Well, I mean, what we aim to achieve from today's event is just to try and get the kids to come out and to engage them through sport. That's all it is, really. I mean, we've got the Olympics coming up and everything else, and we're hoping that it will inspire the kids or the kids will be inspired and they'll come out and have a little run, feel like they're the next Usain Bolt or whoever. <laughs> Now, your objective really is to break down the barriers that might normally apply to youngsters getting involved, hence just doing it straight on the streets, making it nice and easy for them. Well, definitely. I mean, also, this is how I started out in athletics. I used to race the kids up and down the street, very similar to this, or we used to run around the block. And I looked at it, or we looked at it and decided, look where we got to. So if we can give that opportunity to some of the kids and they can race up and down the street, it may inspire them to one day become an Olympian. So maybe your records could be broken in the future by kids here in Swindon? Oh, definitely. I'm hoping that my <laughs> records could be broken. If it's been broken, then that means the sport has progressed. If it hasn't, then I mean, it means that we're stagnant. It's been proven that kids who take part in sport, they're healthier, they learn more, you know, they better be able because of the discipline sport gives. And we're not saying that they have to do athletics. The essence of yeah. all sports is speed. So they go out there and they, you know, this will help them to, whether they want to play football or do something else. I mean, there's so many... There's a huge variety of sport out there waiting for the youngsters to jump in and take part and this is what we're trying to give them that start. And the main thing is that it's an equaliser, isn't it? Regardless of your background, regardless of where you live, how you live, everyone's got the same opportunity. Everyone's got the same opportunity and a wasted opportunity never comes again. So jump, grab it with both hands and if you're good, you're good. If you're not good, then you know I'm sure there's something in our sport that will suit you. Linford, thank you very much indeed for talking to us and I hope you have a great day today in Swindon. Thank you, dry. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a try. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank Thanks. Okay, we're with the uh, guys from St Joseph's School. They're all 14, 15. You live in the streets around here. Yeah. Quickly, what are your names? Mark. Alroy. Alicia. Alistair. Alfred. And who's going to win out of you guys? Yeah. Just Mark. So is it worth even running the race if you know he's going to win? Yeah, I don't mind. You I'm don't doing mind. it for fun. Mind. You're just doing it for fun. And you've yeah. got your t-shirts already. What was yeah. it like meeting Linford Christie? Uh, epic. Epic? Epic. Good word. An amazing experience I'm not going to forget. And what about that photo of you all on the starting blocks? That was pretty cool, right? Yeah. So uh, you're going to have that picture framed up on your wall at home? Shit, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, Doug Ingrey, you're the man who's actually brought the event to Swindon. First of all, congratulations for getting Linford back. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, it's a shame we couldn't get Darren as well, but um, yeah, getting one Olympic gold medalist is obviously yeah, very good. Now, why was um, Swindon being able to secure them back again? Um, one of the main reasons really was the local community. Uh, they funded half of the event. Um, we've managed to get uh, external funding as well. Uh, Tyco and Tesco have both put in a little bit. So literally a big community effort has helped us get the funding to, to bring it back um, for 2012. Now obviously a very important year being the Olympic year. I think, don't think anyone could escape that. No. What effect do you think this will have on the sporting viewpoints of people in, of Swindon? Uh, I think it's going to have a massive impact. It's, it's one of many events going on at the moment, obviously with the Olympic buzz going on. Um, it's kind of started with the Olympic torch. Uh, coming to Swindon with Didier Drogba in the town centre and, and all the runners that ran with it, so that's brilliant. Well, it's a great event. I know everyone's very excited. Despite the weather, yeah, they're going to have a great <laughs> afternoon and I hope it's a huge success for you. Thank you very, Thanks much. very much. Cheers. Thanks. Now it's competition time. Previous winners have been Sophie Pierce, who won two tickets to see Swindon the Opera, and also Janet Lockhart, who was lucky enough to win two camping tickets at the Summer Breeze Festival. Now I can't guarantee you're going to win any treasures this week, but we do have some great prizes. A family pass, which is two adults and two children, for Cotswold Wildlife Park. Four tickets to see Modern Romance and support at the Old Town Bowl and four tickets to see Bjorn again, also at the Old Town Bowl. All you have to do to enter is visit the page on the screen now. If you have a smartphone, you can scan the barcode to be taken straight there. Winners will be contacted by phone and email. For full terms and conditions, please see the competitions page. Well, if you haven't been to the museum or art gallery yet, you really do need to come. As per usual, we've run out of time to show you everything, but uh, do make a date and come down here. And as I said before, the best thing is it's free. Now it's performance time. It's a great pleasure to welcome back a group. Well, we didn't actually see them, but we did see their video. Uh, great to see you, Daryl and the Battlers. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Hi, good to you. see you. Great venue, isn't it? It is. It's lovely. Yeah, I've had a look around. It's great. Does it inspire you musically when you're around? 
great artwork like this. Yeah, well, next the artists. So yeah, yeah, it does, really, does, actually. Yeah, looking at some of the pieces. Yeah, definitely. Now, I'm intrigued, first of all, Battlers. I know you've grown organically as a group. Uh, yourself and Sean started it, and then you sort of, sort of developed as time's gone on with Anna joining most recently. Why the name Battlers? Um, well, Battlers is, is basically French for street performers. And when me and Daryl started, we were kind of on our own acoustic sort of duo, mostly open mics, and it seemed to suit us. And like you say, we've sort of grown since then. And it's also really nice to have that, what I would call the pure music, where we just hear the instrumentation rather than all the effects and so on. I think that was a lot of your thinking as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we started off just doing it acoustically, and as I say, we've sort of grown, so we haven't really changed from the, the sound that we like, So yeah, which is acoustic, really. Which is great, and, yeah. and very popular, and I know it's the festival season, you've had a busy summer already. We have, this has been a fantastic summer for us. We, um they said at the end of last year we were trying to do a summer tour this year and we thought if we could do about 12 dates that would be great. Uh, we've ended up with 20 dates, which is more than we had even expected. We're about three quarters of the way through now. Uh, I think we've got about another five or six dates to do, but it's been a, a great success. And so when can people see you next? Uh, we're actually just going to have a three week gap now while we all take holidays and one thing and another, but we'll be back. <laughs> I think Business is obviously can... good. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good. Yeah, we, I think we need a break. We've been working so hard, but we're, we're, we're back in the first weekend in August. Is it, what's the next festival we have? Uh, we've got Solan. So, um, yeah, that's, another, weekend, that's, that's quite a local one, so that's a really good one. It's um, the 12th, I think, Sunday the 12th. Yeah, uh, we've Tree Fest at the Western Bird Arboretum. We played there last year as well, Excellent. it's fantastic. And it's a great family day as well. Well, again, everyone will be able to get the details from the website, which we're now showing on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so the list of dates and details all on the website. Now, also, you've got a, um, the album you had, which you released last year, which you've actually re-released, which I actually have a copy of here, yeah. uh, rather handily. <laughs> and um, you've actually put an, ed an additional five tracks in it the, earlier on this year. We did, yeah. The, the original album was released in August of last year and there's only 10 tracks on there, so it only came in at just over half an hour. And we always wanted to have more tracks for it, but it was sort of budget and time. So we thought, we'll put the album out. And we've since gone back to it, recorded the remainder of the tracks that we always wanted on there anyway, and now done the, what seems to be the dumb thing now, an extended version, a reissue, with the, the full 15 tracks. Fantastic. And what about the future? Uh, well, we're going to finish the rest of this tour. This takes us through until the middle of September. Uh, and in between sort of gigging, we've been sort of writing and rehearsing. So the plan is, is to go in at the end of the year and start recording and work on album number two. Well, thank you very much indeed, guys. Fantastic. Great to see you. Now, while they get ready to perform to end this week's show, a big thank you to everybody who has been part of this show, especially to Zoe and Emma and everybody here at the Museum and uh, Art Gallery. It's been a great place to do the show from. Now, of course, as always, stay in touch with us. You know the usual ways. Twitter, hashtag The Swindon Show, Facebook, or even email studio at theswindonshow.com. Now, next week, we're going to get all pampered at the Blunston House. We're really looking forward to that. Gemma's going to be back, so it'll be a regular show. And to close out next week's show, we've got the Jess Hall Band, so a real special show. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. And uh, as always, remember, if you do write into us, we might even mention you on air. So to play us out with Two Steps Back, it's a great pleasure to welcome the Battlers. I want
you take two steps back Two steps back.